Hello and welcome to Shanghai Eye. I'm Chen Xuan. Hi, I'm Timothy Pope. The 16th Shanghai Municipal People's Congress is putting a lot of emphasis on the city's leading industries of integrated circuits, biomedicine, and artificial intelligence. And there's been strong growth in these areas over the past year. The value of these three industries has reached 1.8 trillion yuan. And the policies have played their part in this growth. In 2024, Shanghai enacted over 20 policies related to scientific and technology development, aimed at advancing the city's progress and producing high-quality economic growth. Well, on this episode, we'll hear the story of a university professor who's embarked on his own entrepreneurial journey in this rapidly evolving field. My name is、uh, Hamza Boukili, and I am a mathematics、uh, professor in、uh, Shanghai Jiaotong University,、uh, Paris Elite Institute of Technology. I had、uh, the opportunity in 2016, during my student life, to come to Shanghai and to spend a few months of、uh, an exchange semester here in Shanghai. And at that time, I could feel that life here is、uh, very pleasant, actually. So I had that thought in my mind to say that I'll be looking for good opportunities to come back again because it's a nice place to be. So in 2020, the student became the teacher, and in late 2024, an entrepreneur. The kinds of math he teaches his students is applied outside the classroom in the development of algorithms to help companies save energy. Our aim is to apply some optimization algorithms and、uh, machine learning techniques into the、uh, energy efficiency in buildings to contribute to China's public policy in terms of carbon emissions. Shanghai is one very special business environment in the world. Actually, it's a strong and diversified economy. It means that actually, as a business, we are in an environment which is flourishing of diversity of clients in terms of number and also in terms of different types of clients. On a different side, there is the fact that China today is a very highly connected country. In comparison to other places in the world, here we enjoy high degree of connectivity because mainly everything that you can think of in terms of equipment, you will find people here in China that manufacture this, that do it for a long time, and that are highly competitive in terms of price and quality of the equipments they do. Actually, I am in the best environment I can think of. Hi, it's great to meet you. Hi, hi. So much for、uh, spending the time with us. Nice to meet、cool. you. Nice to meet you. Please. So, Hamza, tell me, you you've established your company really, really recently,、yeah. just、uh, at the end of 2024.、Yeah. Um, what prompted you、uh, to to take this step? So, actually, there is、uh, many reasons uh, that uh, converged at the same time towards the fact that. Uh, uh, Towards the decision to open the company,、uh, first of all, there is the fact that uh, AI, uh, artificial intelligence, in the recent times, is、uh, a field of science which is gaining、uh, more and more、uh, dynamic, and、uh, we wanted to have、uh, our little contribution in this field. So this is on one side. On another side, there is the、uh, China's national policies in terms of、uh, carbon neutrality, which encourages people. To work on their energy, to consume the energy more efficiently, to have a smaller carbon footprint.、Uh, so, in order to align the different sorts of、uh, policies, at the same time, the national policies and the international artificial intelligence uh, uh, tendency,、uh, we thought about this project actually in the recent times, and、uh, it was uh, like uh, highlighted by、uh, the creation and the setup of the company, and、uh, at the end of 2024. Now, being such a new company, this is obviously the most difficult stage for any startup. How do you go about, you know, failure-proofing yourself? I suppose. Of course,、uh, failure is、uh, a risk that exists、uh, all the time, especially for、uh, such a project. So it's something that、uh, we accept.、Uh, it's a,、um, a probability that exists, and we、uh, could maybe、uh, face one day. But at the same time, in my opinion, it's a question of、uh, proportions. So if the proportion of failure is big, you would ask yourself. Is it worth it to invest the time, the energy, and eventually the money? In my point of view, the proportion of success is bigger for the moment. So、uh, we have every reason 
to do this project right now and not to postpone it to tomorrow and uh, even uh, if you think about uh, abandoning no it's completely not an option because we have every reason to think that it's going to gain momentum i want to talk about some of those succeeding factors because you know uh, there does seem to be at least vocally quite a lot of support coming from from the government towards yeah. Yeah. Uh, high tech entrepreneurship how how do you how, how have you sort of benefited from some of this have you uh, so actually uh, here we can talk about the place we are in today we are in uh, high tech uh, area which is one uh, high tech key area of shanghai city uh, which also has uh, you know quite a long uh, history of hosting and uh, building from scratch uh, startup projects so this is a very uh, convenient environment for such a project to set up and to grow big because these guys have seen this uh, all the time they have experience they can accompany you to be to be better and at the same time uh, since uh, artificial intelligence is a field which is gaining a lot of momentum recently this actually translates into practice by some uh, very concrete uh, measures for example being labeled an AI, AI company you have the priority to come and to set up actually in front of uh, maybe other projects or other fields that have to go through deeper analysis before uh, seeing whether or not to accept them to open in this place. Here actually we have a supercomputer and it's free for, for, for our companies to That's access. To. That's a very huge thing. I think that there is a lot of, you know, talk about these high-tech parks, industrial parks and things, but what you've given is a really great explanation about, you know, how and why they're important. You yourself come from a university background. Yeah. Um, how much cooperation uh, do you see between learning institutions uh, and institutions like uh, Tsao Hajin because we've sort of seen it from other angles before in terms of graduates and recruits, but also, you know, you are an academic coming yeah. into, <laughs> into business. How do you see the cooperation on that side? I'm teaching my students mathematics, basic algorithms and, uh, and uh, uh, logic elements and so on. And uh, through a project like mine, I could help them to see in practice how some very innocent elements of mathematical logic could be used to build up an algorithm, to build up a tool, could like have a, a practical value in the market that could actually be sold for a lot of money actually. So you are just you are just selling your 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 uh, um, your field of expertise yeah, a little bit actually <laughs> so, uh, and being able to build such a, a bridge between the two circles uh, it's something that i think uh, as a life purpose is something that uh, gives a huge satisfaction actually so my long term purpose is to be able through my project to uh, build this kind of uh, partnership between the academic world and the industrial world this way I can allow our students for, from the university to put their knowledge into practice to be able to confront themselves to the real life market issues at the same time we hope to be able to, through our knowledge, through our algorithms, through our science, to be able to put in the market some new tools that are, uh, we hope, efficient, interesting, and maybe could help a lot of people out there to uh, save a lot of money, maybe. Fantastic, really <laughs> fascinating insights. Thanks Thank so much for talking to us. Thank you very much. Shanghai has a lot of areas which serve as hubs for different technology sectors, biotech, AI, aerospace, EVs, and so on. Now we're joined by another professor, Huang Yejing, from the Shanghai Academy of Social Sciences, Institute of World Economy. So, Professor Huang, how does the government go about making the city one of the best places for innovative new businesses? Yes, just as you said, Shanghai as one of the top innovation center in the data and the leading um, R&D uh, research cluster in Asian Pacific Center has the high reputation to give the incentive policy for R&D oriented or we call technology intensive startup. Uh, in terms of this action plan, uh, we will find no matter in the civil uh, level and the industrial park level, varieties of this uh, fund we named as little giant startup fund and the high tech incubation fund can be uh, give the full accessible uh, way 
for high technology to apply uh, both big giant R&D center and the uh, startups we call the small and the media enterprises, high tech uh, enterprises can get the access to apply for those subsidies and uh, to apply for the variety of ways, even this uh, uh, world expo and as a fair to show their high tech products to pursue the uh, market, uh, uh, market meeting. Time for Shanghai A to Z. With the Spring Festival just around the corner, the city's in a celebratory mood and ready to welcome in the Year of the Snake. Follow us online to see where you can go during the holiday. Yuyuan Garden has begun its Lantern Fair, inspired this year by Mountain and Sea, a jungle story. This is the 30th edition of this fair, which offers a fusion of traditional Chinese culture and modern art. Should you visit, you'll be brought into a world where light and shadow blur the lines between reality and fantasy. It's worth a look. Sunan Mansions is also celebrating the Chinese New Year. Festive highlights there include the first apple of Sunan winter. That's an art installation. And you've got the chance to make some New Year wishes as well. You can also see a photography exhibition entitled Fu, which means good fortune. There's also artificial snowfall and some light shows at night, transforming that area into a winter wonderland. Over in Hongkou District, an intangible cultural heritage themed bazaar is taking place. That's held at Inlet and it features more than 200 activities, including a lantern fair, exhibitions, markets and performances. You can experience some traditional Chinese culture there and ring in the new year of the snake. And there are also some other shows and exhibitions that we would like to recommend. If you've got any questions for us, you can find us on our socials. We'd like to hear from you and you can find all our content online as well. And join us here on Dragon TV, Monday to Friday. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you next time. During my nearly 20 years working as a television host on ICS, I always enjoyed providing information and services for our foreign viewers. In this new era, as a member of Shanghai Media Group, ICS is leveling up with a brand new digital service, and we name it Shanghai Eye. Starting with the brand new English program, Shanghai Eye on Dragon TV, we will provide you with even more. More coverage. We're going from a local Shanghai-based TV channel to a global network with a 24-7 streaming service, Shanghai Eye Live 24, for all of our content that can be viewed anywhere in the world. More convenience will be available on multiple platforms, not only on television, but online as well, right at your fingertips. More content. We'll provide you with more first-hand experiences of life and business in Shanghai and more stories showcasing everything China has to offer. We're here for all of our viewers who are interested in Shanghai and China. Opening up to the world. We are changing. We're leveling up. And there's a lot more to come. From ICS to Shanghai Eye. Join, Join us, us for more. more.